this show, this TV television series, The Last Kingdom, has a new movie out called Seven Kings Must Die. I haven't watched it yet, but I wanted to review the show because this is one of my favorite shows that ever existed. So much so that I bought all the books and read the whole book series. Amazing. I wish I had them right there on my shelf, but I sold them for we money. Shame on me, but kind of funny. All right. So, The Last Kingdom is a British historical fiction TV series based on Bernard Cornwell's The Saxon Stories series of novels. I'm going to double check and make sure the camera's there recording. Sorry. Fix my shirt, my shorts. Yes, yes. Very good, very good. It's still recording. Ah. The series was developed for television by Stephen Butcher and premiered on the October 10th, 2015 on BBC Dose. For the, two. for the second season, Netflix would co-produce the series. In 2018, the series was acquired by Netflix, who continued to solely produce the series for tres más seasons. The series lasted a total of 46 episodes across single seasons, with the final season airing on March 9, 2022, a year ago. So it's fitting that a feature-length sequel that concludes the series story, titled Seven Kings Must Die, premiered on 14th of April, 2023. The day that this was supposed to come out. All right. So the first series covers the, roughly covers the events of the last, so it's like two books. I find it interesting that in Britain, they don't call them seasons, they call them series. And I don't know what they call a series. Because we call a series series okay so let's see i'm gonna look that up if in britain they call a season a series what do they call a series somebody maybe you answer before i Program. So their series is a program, which is P-R-O-G-R-A-M-M-E. Interesting. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. So... To me, at least. I'm out of energy drinking in this one. Oh, I got some water right here, guys. This is some pretty decent water. It was the fastest one that would come to my house from Amazon. All right. So the first season or series roughly covers the events of The Last Kingdom, which is the first book, which became the title of the series, and also the Saxon Chronicles, or the cracks, Saxon Stories, kind of changed its name to the Last Kingdom series. Uh, the Pale Horseman was the second book. And, um, you know, it was condensed for the screen. In the year 866, the Great Heathen's Army arrival in Britain is about to redefine the relationship between Vikings and Anglo-Saxons. Following the establishment of Danish rule in Jorvik and East Anglia, the show largely focuses on the resistance of the Kingdom of Wessex to ongoing Viking incursions to southern England. The first season covers the years 866 to 878. The main protagonist, named Osbert in childhood, is rebaptized as Uhtred after his elder brother Uhtred is killed by the Danes. His father, along with other Saxon noblemen of Northumbria, are killed in battle against the Danes. Only his uncle and stepmother survive. Uhtred and a Saxon girl named Breda are taken as slaves by Earl Ragnar to his home in Danish Northumbria. Ragnar comes to accept Uhtred as his own son, adopts him, and raises him as Uhtred Ragnarsson. Time passes and Ragnar's daughter, Thera, is about to get married. But fellow Danes attack the night before the wedding 
and set fire to the hall in which the family is sleeping. Ragnar is burned alive, and Thera is taken as slave. Only Utron, Utron, that's Ninja Turtles, Utron. Only Uhtred and Breda escape as they have spent the night in the woods tending to a char charcoal kiln. The attackers are led by Kjartan, a disgruntled Viking who had been banished by Ragnar from his lands earlier for an offense committed by Kjartan's son, Sven. Uhtred vows to avenge his father's death, Ragnar, when simultaneously hoping to reclaim Bebenberg, his birthright from his uncle, who seeks to kill Uhtred to keep Bebenberg for himself. Uhtred is forced to choose between the kingdom of his ancestors and the people who have raised them, and his loyalties are constantly tested. The plot of series one culminates with the Battle of Eddington. Fucking incredible. Uh, series two uh, roughly covers the third and fourth novels, The Lords of the North and Sword Song. Second season covers the years 878 to 886, shows Uhtred's quest in Northumbria and Wessex and Mercia, uh, conflict with the brothers, and Mercia's conflict with the brothers Siegfried and Eric. This was the final season to air on BBC before moving to Netflix. Series three begins, uh, was solely produced by Netflix, is based on the fifth and sixth novels, The Burning Land and Death of Kings. However, there are considerable plot changes compared to the previous seasons. The third season roughly covers the years 893 to 900. These episodes cover the, the, cover the decline in King Alfred's health and the continuing conflict between the Christians and Danes. One reviewer suggested that Netflix had a positive effect on the series, indicating with it came a certain increase in production values most notably during the epic end of episode Clash, in which the swing of every sword and thwack of every shield hit firmly home, but added that the blood and gore budget also brought also undergone a significant increase, thanks in large to the part to the arrival of the beautiful but psychotic Skade. All 10 episodes of Series 3 appeared on Netflix on November 19th, 2018. I'm going to double check this. Camera. All right, we're still going. Series four, based on the seventh and eighth books, The Pagan Lord and The Empty Throne. Similar to series three, there are significant plot changes from the novels. The fourth season takes place around 901 to 912 and deals with Danish AD and deals with Danish attacks on political struggles in Mercia and attacks on Winchester. Uhtred of Bevenberg continues his quest to reclaim his birthright and avenge his father's death while also navigating the political turmoil and warfare in 9th century England. The season begins with the arrival of a new enemy, the Danes, led by the warlord uh, Sig... Sigtrigger. I forgot how to say it. I'm going to check how to say it. Because he has a, his one of I remember him saying the writer saying that Citric I exist, so it's similar to Citric, but it looks like Sig Trigger. Sigtrix. Whoa, it is like Sigtrix. 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 Damn. Okay. So the new the Danes, the new enemies, were led by the warlord. Named. Sigtrix. Right? Cool name. Uh, who has come to conquer Wessex and unite all of England under Danish rule. Meanwhile, Uhtred is reunited with his old friend, the warrior priest, Father Bianca, and joins forces with Alfred's daughter, Athelflaed, who has become the ruler of Mercia to defend against the Danes. So all these, a lot of these people are real, like um, Athelflaed and Mer like she was one of the, but Uhtred, there was an Uhtred, but you know, it's it's obviously like there's fiction stuff and Bianca, we don't know if there's a um, do 
Throughout the season, Uhtred faces challenges and betrayals from both enemies and allies, including his former friend and now rival King Edward of Wessex, who was the son of uh, Alfred. He also reunites with his son, young Uhtred, who is now a young warrior himself and forms new alliances with the Welsh and the Irish to gain the upper hand in the war. As the war intensifies, Uhtred faces a difficult choice between his loyalty to his friends and his desire for revenge against the man who killed his father, while also grappling with the possibility of finding a new home and identity in the midst of the chaos. The season ends with a dramatic battle between the Saxons and the Danes, which leads to unexpected alliances and consequences for Uhtred and his companions, setting the stage for the upcoming fifth season. All 10 episodes of Series 4 appeared on Netflix on April 26, 2020. What was interesting because that, that series came out whenever during the pandemic and went in the first couple episodes, there was like a plague or there was a sickness. So the, the Irishman, uh, I forgot his name. Because uh, there's an Irish dude who follows Utrecht when they met when they were slaves on a ship. Bro, because in the in the first series he was a slave. It's just it's just a great show series story. Um, so season five is a lot shorter. It says not that it was shorter, but it says uh, it was based on the ninth, tenth, and thirteenth novels. Uh, I guess they skipped eleven and twelve. Warriors of the Storm, The Flame Bearer, and Warlord. Similar to series three and four, there are significant plot changes from the novels. What? So what are episodes 11 and 12? Let me see. I mean, that episode book. Let me look up the Saxon stories. So, War of the Wolf uh, and Sword of Kings. I remember them being great books. So, what happened here? Uh, well, they kind of put a little bit in there because it has a little bit about Athelstan. Oh, yeah, Uhtred and Sea Trigger. Work together. Mm. So it's just like a, I guess like a side. So I, it's pretty good though. It was a good book. I bought it. I remember I bought it when it came out. And then Sword of Kings came out in 2019. Um, so Edward is dying at that point. Someone named Ed Gifu. Ed Gifu. Sends a message to Uhtred begging for his help. Uh, murder wall. East Anglia. It's like a lot of fighting. Oh man, at the end it says that Uhtred is told the plague is broken out in the north. His wife, son-in-law, and grandchildren are dead. I mean, it was, that was a good clip too, but I guess they just wanted that to be. Warlord, they did. Okay. Anyway. Uh, I follow a lot of the actors on Instagram. I mean, Alexander Draymond, who's Uhtred. Emily Cox, who's Brita. Uh, Eliza Butterworth, who's Owlsworth. Um, greatly acted. There's, you'll laugh, you'll cry. It's not hilarious, but there's there's a lot of action. Um, revenge, you know, blood oaths. It's pretty badass. So the series started shooting in November of 2014. So that's like a decade of their life. 
the main actors. Um, historical background. The main events of the reign of Alfred the Great and his heirs are well recorded. And a number of men called Uhtred ruled from Bamberg Castle, most notably Uhtred the Bold, more than a century later. The people identified as Danes came from many places in and around Denmark. So maybe it was based on Uhtred the Bold. He was very bold. Including southern Sweden and Norway. Oh yeah, because he kills Ubba. And, uh, like, in, in the Vikings, they call him Ube. Ube, Ube, which is one of the sons of Ragnar. Another Ragnar. But there's a diff, because there are different Ragnars in this. You, it's kind of like Quan or Chris. There's many Chris's. Um, the people identified as Danes came from many places in and around Denmark, including southern Sweden and Norway. Historians believe that the Danish invaders of Northumbria came from Jutland in Denmark, as mentioned in Cornwell's books, as well as some of the Danish islands in East Denmark or southern Sweden. Oh, yeah, they're recording in Budapest. A lot of it was in Budapest. Bernard Cornell was like did a little the writer he did a little appear cameo. Has been met with mostly positive. Uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, the first series has eighty seven percent approval based on thirty one critics. I like this one. It says that the last kingdom proves that there's room enough on television for more than one Viking invasion. For me, I fell in love with the whole thing because I bought some Viking comic books and shit like graphic novels that were this thick. I already sold them. I wish I had them all here for green money. Well, obviously, green money for back when it was the free money. I wonder if they probably didn't even pick that up on the mic. Uh, Pretty badass. Five stars for a fucking series, man. Not a lot of episodes in each. 46 episodes. It's not that bad. Alright, I'm going to take one more break. Then we're going to do Badass Woman of Hearst 3. And then maybe Freestyle. Because the music, the background. We'll see what happens. Be right back, ladies. Chance.